This video will show the general workflow for creating a model in the RM Bridge Modeler. By the end of the video, you will understand the fundamentals of how a model is created using an axis, cross sections, segments, and tables for variable dimensions. The first step in creating the model will be to define the axis. RM has the ability to import an axis from a LandXML file, which is a file format that can be created from either inroads or geopack. To import a land XML file, go to File, Import Land XML File. However, for this example, the axis will be created using the tools in RM for defining an alignment and profile. A new axis is created in the menu tree. In the ground plan list, the axis can be defined with straight lines circular curves, spirals, and cubic curves. The axis will start with a straight line. When starting the alignment definition, the location of a starting point is first needed. Next, the length of the line is added. At the end of the line will be a spiral. A spiral is defined by either parameter or length and radius or curvature. The last part of this alignment will be a circular curve. It is defined by length and radius. The alignment is now complete and can be viewed in plan view by clicking the blue and yellow arrow button to toggle between graphical view and list view. The profile is defined in much the same way. In this example it will be created using two tangents which will be rounded at their intersection point. After giving the start point the first tangent is defined by its length and end height. The same is done for the second tangent. After switching to the graphical view, the profile can be rounded at the intersection of the two tangents by inputting a radius. The definition of the alignment and profile is now complete and the 3D axis can be viewed. The next step will be to define the cross-section. Although cross-sections are often defined by hand, in this example, the cross-section will be imported from a library. The library contains groups of cross-sections. In each group, there are several cross-sections and a short description of each. RM Bridge comes with a library of cross sections predefined, and you can add any cross section you create by hand to the library. In this example, I will take a predefined hollow box cross section. Cross sections are defined using construction lines as you see here. After placing the construction lines, the 2D finite element mesh of the cross section is created by connecting the intersection points of the construction lines. Using this method, any arbitrary cross section shape can be defined, and RM will be able to calculate the section properties based on the 2D finite element mesh. In addition to the section shape, other information is placed in the cross section. For example, there are locations of connection points stress checkpoints, which can later be used in code checking and post-processing, locations of reinforcement groups where the program will design a required area of reinforcing steel. Some reinforcement types include bending, web vertical shear, torsion, and longitudinal shear reinforcement. And definitions of nonlinear temperature gradients are also made in the cross-section. Also, 
Any of the construction lines that were used to create the cross section can be defined as variable. This example has variable dimensions for the height of the section, the thickness of the webs, and the thickness of the bottom flange. These dimensions can be changed here or defined for the entire superstructure using a table as will be shown later. Now that the axis and cross section have been defined, they can be combined together into a segment. In the RM Bridge Modeler, the term segment refers to a structural unit comprised of several beam elements. For example, the superstructure of this bridge will be a segment consisting of 35 beam elements, and each of the piers will also be its own segment consisting of four beam elements. Definition of a main girder segment requires reference to an axis. Next, segment points are placed. In the structural model, segment points will be node locations, and between adjacent segment points or node locations will be a beam element. Segment points can be evenly spaced or placed wherever there is a point of interest for the designer. A cross section is also chosen for the segment points. The 3D model of the bridge is already coming together and can be viewed at this point. Beam elements and nodes will need to be numbered. Later, in the RM Bridge Analyzer, loads are defined using beam and node numbers, and the construction sequence is also set up using element numbers. A group can be assigned to these beam elements that will facilitate post-processing later. A material is chosen from a library. Later, in the RM Bridge Analyzer, the material can be viewed, edited, or changed altogether. Finally, the nodes and elements are numbered. The 3D model of the bridge currently shows a prismatic section. However, since the cross section has some variable dimensions, tables can be created which will define the values of those variables along the length of the bridge. In this example, the height of the cross section will change over the length of the superstructure. Each point in the table is defined with three pieces of information. First is the location along the length of the bridge. Next is the value which will be assigned to the variable. And third is the interpolation to the next point. Not every point along the length of the bridge needs to be defined. Only enough points to properly describe the variation in dimensions. After inputting a few points, you can switch to the diagram view and see how the table is coming together. After finishing the table definition, it must be assigned to a certain variable dimension of the cross section that was used in the superstructure segment. On the variables tab, of the superstructure. The table is assigned to a certain variable dimension.
Now the 3D view of the model will show the variation. In this way, only one cross-section has to be defined for a non-prismatic superstructure. RM Bridge will automatically generate the other cross-sections at node locations where the dimensions have changed. All cross-section properties for each of the sections will be calculated and can be viewed and reported on. Definition of the peer segments is done in much the same way as the superstructure. First, a cross-section is needed, which, in this case, can be taken from the library. A simple rectangular section will be used for the wall pier in this example. Some of the dimensions will need to be changed. Next, a new segment is created, and the type is changed to peer. The input changes now because unlike a main girder, which requires reference to an axis, a peer segment requires reference to a main girder. The location of the peer is chosen from the segment points in the main girder, and a connection point is chosen. Segment points are also inserted for a peer with a negative value indicating a distance downward from the top of the pier. Groups, materials, and node and element numbers will need to be assigned. The 3D model will now show the location of the pier. So far, the bottom of the pier has not been connected to the ground, and the top of the pier has not been connected to the superstructure. The pier has only been located in reference to the superstructure. Connections in RM are made using spring elements. To connect the pier, to the ground, a spring zero element will be used. This type of spring is connected to a node at one end and to the theoretical ground at the other. A spring element number is given, a connection point is chosen, and the spring constants can be set. The default values are indicative of fixing a rotation or a translational direction and will be left fully fixed. Connection from the pier to the superstructure can also be made rigid. Since the second pier in this example is the same as the first, it can be copied to cut down on input. A new name is given and a new location is chosen. Also, element and node numbers will have to be changed for this next peer. The 3D model will now show the location of both peers. The last step in creating this model will be to define the bearings at the abutments. Currently, the ends of the bridge are merely cantilevered out from the piers. To define a two-bearing end support, a macro has been created in the modeler. The spring element numbers will need to be defined, and spring constants can be set. This will be done at both ends of the bridge.
This completes the definition of a hollow box bridge in the RM Bridge Modeler. The model is then sent from the modeler to the RM Analyzer. In the RM Analyzer, tendons are defined and all of the rest of the analysis, design, and code checking is performed. Creating other bridge types in the modeler is done in much the same way as has been shown here. An axis is created or imported, cross sections are created or selected from the library, and the two of them are joined together in a segment. Tables for variable dimensions are also optional. There are different segment types for main girders and piers, as well as cables and cross members. And finally, every segment in the modeler is then connected through spring elements or rigid connections.